you were talking about um, of the obviously the sort of black magic activity, the satanic activity in the cemetery. Yes. Would you say obviously because there's everybody's quite aware of the amount of vandalism and desecration that was occurring within the the cemetery? Would you say that a lot of that was was that were that these this group was responsible for that all of that or for most of it? No, I wasn't actually trying to imply that. Okay. But you know, I'm, I'm glad you've asked that question. I'd like to clarify it. Um, I'm just going to have to stand up a minute and get a book off the shelf, if you, if you don't mind. Okay, I'll hold your mic. Could you? Yeah. <laughs> okay, even if I'm not here. need my glasses for this. There was a lot of mindless vandalism at Highgate Cemetery, which was absolutely nothing to do with satanic activity. A lot of it was performed by cranks who were going into the cemetery opening coffins and taking out skeletons and staking bodies and all that sort of thing. Now, I said I'm glad you asked that question, and I am, because I've just got a book off the shelf here, and I haven't read it from cover to cover, but I've certainly read the bit which was brought to my attention. And it's the um, autobiography of John Lydon, better known as Johnny Red, sorry. Johnny Rotten. Johnny <laughs> Rotten, can't even say his name, of the Sex Pistols. He gives a fairly detailed account of his life. And the title is, No Irish, No Blacks, and No Dogs. I really don't know what that means, but. Um, it's just one of those kind of unfortunate things. I think if you were a black, Afro-Caribbean or an African person or some of an Irish background and particularly come to one of the major cities where it could be London or Manchester it wasn't an unfamiliar sight there were people looking for board and lodgings there would be a sign on the front window that would say exactly what you've just quoted yeah. so did they actually say that? yeah well even in Manchester? yeah I just thought I'd ask and that's, of course, <laughs> that all changed with the Race Relation Act yeah, so of course, yeah. people obviously were running a business in which they were providing accommodation for individuals they couldn't discriminate on the grounds of race. Right, you know, no, yeah. I just thought mainly applied to mm. London because he was born in... Yeah, yeah, in yeah. it would be quite world. a familiar sight around London. Oh, okay, well shall I read you the passage? Oh yes please. Okay, he writes... During the summer period when we were about 16 or 17 and I was going to school in Hackney, we break into the crypts where the, where the bodies were stacked on shelves, open up the coffins and have a look. We'd see which bodies hadn't deteriorated. Was this vampire thing real? Question. So many people were doing it, it was like a social club down there. You'd meet so many people, loonies mostly, running around with wooden stakes, crucifixes and cloves of garlic. We'd get bored with that, there'd be a pub at the top of the road and we'd have and we'd drink a bit. Then go back into the crypts later that night. I had etc etc etc. It goes on, but he makes clear reference there to Highgate Cemetery and he was just confirming that this is the sort of thing he actually says it, it was like a social club down there. I think David is quite worth adding that point. I suppose you know yourself that you do feel that you were a scapegoat for much of this kind of activity that was going on. Well undoubtedly, yeah. Mm. Because my name was sort of in the public view if you like and because I made no, I wasn't really frightened of people in those days. I didn't, I could Take that. Redmond, I really didn't care what people thought of me. 
people were always accused of being involved in black magic, in Satanism, and God knows what else. But I really didn't care. I used to think if people... Oh, sorry, I forgot. And sacrificing cats. Mustn't forget that one. It's all nonsense. But I really didn't care. I thought if people want to think that and believe that it's their problem, it's not my problem. I haven't done anything. All I've done, my only crime, was, if anything, was being a psychic investigator, mm -hmm. trying to delve into the unusual. And put it this way, on the question of vandalism, at that time, Johnny Rotten, which he admits in his autobiography, which I believe was published in 1993, was only one of many people that tried to cash in on Blanket Cemetery. Now, in 1968, I believe, um, films were, Highgate Cemetery was being used as a location for vampire films. The one that comes to mind is The Body Beneath. Mm. which was strictly a, a vampire film and it, part of it, if not all, most of it was filmed in Highgate Cemetery. Hello. The Body Beneath, filmed in the graveyards of England. A tale of terror, of vampires, of cannibalistic desires. Do you actually think that the vampire myth evolved from that? You know, that... It may put I ideas in people's minds well, that there might be a vampire connection. It certainly helps. Because mm. it certainly influenced people like Johnny Rotten. And of course there was the Hammer movies as well. The Hammer movies, mm. I can't remember what they're all called now. Taste the Blood of Dracula. That's anything? quite a well-known one. Yeah, and it, if you see the film, quite a lot, they use quite a lot, heavily quite a lot of the locations yeah. within the cemetery, particularly yeah. the, the Circle of Lebanon. And there were other films too. Mm. I can't honestly remember the title of them, but all oh, I mean, I think the most recent one was Dorian Gray, I believe. They used as a location. I take your word for it. Yeah. And it was being used for these vampire films, yeah, prior to that. <coughs> At the time of the, shall we call it, vampire epidemic, I've already gone into it with you quickly, basically. What? how I experience, my experiences of the phenomenon there. I called it an entity. I never called it a vampire. Did you feel that you were, I mean, I, th I think some people sometimes, I remember my first exposure to the Harrogate vampire case, I think it was a, like a book on supernatural and the occult, of all places in the school library, and in which they kind of, it kind of retold your story we told the story of Thornton's encounter in the cemetery. Yeah. And I think their conclusion of the book was, I cannot remember the source, but they seem to give the impression that the vampire reputation was because many people felt they had been felt drained of energy yeah, by the apparition and the hypnotic red eyes. So that's one, one could factor, say yeah. it could give it a kind of a vampiric quality. Yeah. So are you asking me if I think that contributed to it, the story. Maybe in some way. Well, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Mm. I mean, I just mentioned the book there. But other people all trying to cash in on the mm. vampire stories. I mean, I can think of one particular individual, but I remember his one particular, I suppose, early narrative which was in, I suppose I can mention, Underwood's anthology on vampires. Oh, Peter Underwood, yeah. And I found it was most interesting, he had an introduction to said chapter in which he said he, he had sources of information, I think it was dating back to 1968, of, of witnesses seeing a dark shadow flip between tomb to tomb or grave to grave. Do you Not know? quite sure who you mean, but I must be honest with you, I've, I've never seen any of those sources disclosed mm. by anybody. No, I mean he doesn't go into particular de detail. I think the book is it's the I can't remember what it's called Underwoods. The bedside companion, isn't it? Vampire's companion, yeah, or something like that. Yeah, I think it's like a two-page introduction. Yeah, yeah. To the Highgate vampire case. Well, it just confirms what I said. Everybody at that period was trying to cash in mm. on the the ghost, if you like, the unexplained. But maybe because it was malevolent. Of yeah. attacks and all this sort of thing. I think they said it was like two witnesses or something had seen this black shape skulking amongst the tombs 
and then it seemed to appear to disappear in one of the vaults and they just said they seen drops of blood or something like that. I think that's how this Underwood described it. Right, well, I can't really comment on that because I, I do have the Underwood book yeah. buried in my files and mm. I don't have it at hand. But I can tell you other people trying to cash in, um, you know, there was one, for example, person who I can name because it was on the front page of the Hampstead Highgate Express. And I wonder, was this individual that may have been a source of information for Underwood? It could be quite possible. I don't know, no. but he was certainly on the front page and his name was Barry Edwards. Mm. He was a male clerk as a job and he ran the, they called their film unit, the Hellfire Film Club. Cine Club or something. Wasn't Cine, it? Yeah, sorry, it. Cine Club. Mm. And when he heard reports or saw reports of vampire I get cemetery which were running, which were being ran by the Ham and High, he suddenly decided to come forward and say, no, no, what these witnesses all saw was our cine club filming at night. Mm. Oh, I think the film was called Vampires at Night. Okay. And he said it was us filming in there. Well, I immediately contacted the Ham and High, said it couldn't have been then because the sightings don't coincide Mm. If they're filming, they're alleged filming. And I, I'm certainly not saying they didn't make a film. Am I led to believe that Barry Edwards also made an appearance on television? Because I know you you were interviewed for the Today I program, believe he did. But I and there was a follow-up, wasn't there, apparently? The other I, week, I the believe, following week or so. I believe he did, but I can't really comment on that because I never saw the... Mm. I heard it was described that he, a, a coffin was wheeled in with lots of, um, I suppose, what you call it, that kind of smoke effect. And which he then came out of the car. Oh, wouldn't you surprise me? I take your word for it. Well, I mean, it's, it's news to me, but it was just, I'm only speaking from one of somebody who posted on, on my society, you know, this yeah, information. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did ask him at the time, but he has so far not got back, whether or not he'd actually seen it himself. Right. As I said, I can't really answer that because I never saw his follow up on television. But, uh, you know, other people tried to cash in on to, uh, you know, some, somebody else, Screaming Lord Such, in mid-1970, and she, quite a well-known actress, I can't remember her name either. I've seen the front cover, because they're both one front cover of Hammond High, weren't they, or something? Yes, yes, and he's Screaming Lord Such, or I should say the late Screaming Lord Such, mm -hmm. was trying to plan a film in using Highgate Cemetery as a location and using this quite famous actress whose name I'm not I'm not evading because I mean it's been yeah. in the newspaper. Mm. <coughs> I don't know if he ever got around to starting the film or whatever happened, but the point I'm making is that so many people tried to cash in on it. Once the sort of vampire tag took off. Once the vampire tag had been established everybody wanted a piece of the action and mm. everybody ironically was attributing it to me i and suppose it because it was i suppose to the as far as the media are concerned you're the first interfit person to sort of alert everybody to i suppose with your initial letter to the ham and high it's not so much that but i've been yes but i've been yeah but even in that letter i never said it was a no vampire. but were, was that kind of a vampire rumor already around by the even before your letter was published early in 1970 no, no. that only came the About weeks later because of my letter okay uh i mean i've got a question here from my society it kind of relates back to your encounter with the the entity um it says here, would, how would you describe the atmosphere at that moment in terms of the sm of smells and so on? Uh, how did the sense of time flow as you were in the midst of the actual encounter? I, you know, I think I've already answered that by mm. saying it was almost b being like drawn into some sort of vivid dream. Time seems, it, it, as I said, it all took place in the course of seconds. Mm four, five, six seconds, certainly m not much longer than that, the actual sighting. Tense of, sorry, the sense of time just seemed to stop at that, mm. for that short period. And with that, the temperature drop, you're saying as well? Oh yeah, the temperature dropped, mm. definitely.
Okay, speaking of time flows, the confu one confusing element of your initial account is the various dates and number of sightings you've given over time. For example, in your original letter you said you sighted the bean on three occasions, on Christmas Eve, the week after, and the week before you wrote your letter. By October 1970, you said it was last February, and on two occasions, but now you imply you only saw it once, on December the 21st, or one evening after Christmas. For the record, could you clarify exactly what date you saw it and how many times in total? I've actually clarified that question. Can I ask you, is that question from somebody called Anthony, or are you not allowed to say? Um, we can leave it if you want, you don't have to. <laughs> Look, Christmas Eve, that's absolute nonsense. Mm -hmm. First sighting was at the winter solstice, 21st of December. I certainly uh, did not say Christmas Eve. That was an error on the part of maybe a newspaper. Okay. It was around Christmas, so some was written mm. it was on Christmas Eve. No, as false, it was not on Christmas Eve. I saw the entity on one occasion, but positive sighting, which I already just described to you. Yeah. <coughs> What happened after that was I said, and I've already explained this in detail to on rather the Supernatural World website, mm. which I'm sure that person would or should have read. Yeah, well, of course, for the benefit of those watching. For the benefit yeah. of people watching, mm. I saw it on one occasion only, but two of my members of members of the society who had gone to the cemetery reported that each one of them had seen it once very quickly. And that was of course related to the okay. vigils, the vigils they had. Well, yeah. also, it also relates to the time when they were keeping watch and it, it glided off the path. Mm. So that's really been twisted out of all proportion. So really you were, you were really referring not just your own encounter but that collectively of your group yes experiences to date. exactly which I explained on the supernatural okay. world forum thank you David for clarifying that for us and I've got another question that kind of relates to your letter or obviously the, your, the media handling of your experiences uh, although you mentioned in your original letter you said uh, whatever it was I was sure it was of a psychic nature I say this with some certainty for it was draining me of energy, it was real. It was actually happening. Would it be reasonable to suggest you encountered a psychic vampire, i.e. a person or being who feeds off the life force of other <laughs> living creatures? If so, is that why you put particular emphasis on not believing in blood-sucking vampires? No, that's absolutely nonsense. And can I tell you why? The person who's asking that question automatically, see, we're loggerheads here and for the word vampire I've never my god I've tried to explain I've tried to get it through some thick heads I'm sorry I'm not trying to be through this I've been trying to get it through so many thick heads that when I used the term vampire it was one that was adopted by the press look the press adopted the term still adopt the term the Loch Ness Monster. Mm. If I'm referring to some experience with the Loch Ness Monster or somebody else's experience with the Loch Ness Monster, I'm not going to say an unidentified creature in on Loch Ness. Mm. People wouldn't know what he's talking about. They'd say, are you talking about the Loch Ness Monster? So if I say the Loch Ness Monster straight away, they'll know what is the point of reference. When I use the term I get vampire, and I called my society, another society I formed back in 1997, the Highgate Vampire Society. It wasn't because I believed in vampires, it was to try and give people a point of reference so they knew. The very people that were coming to the Highgate Vampire Society already asked me questions about the Highgate Vampire. I think to be fair enough, I suppose if somebody said you called it the Highgate Entity or the Highgate Ghost, people will not be... We they wouldn't be interested. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose it's just like you say, it's like Bigfoot or or Mothman, I suppose. It, it, it's, it's, it's not a tag you would have liked to have been applied, no, but, I but didn't like it's, it. it's quite a useful one, as people, nobody's yeah. left in any doubt what you're referring to when you talk about exactly. the Highgate Vampire. 
Well, that's it exactly. But of course, then I'm accused. Well, if you don't believe in vampires, then you must believe in psychic vampires. Mm. Look, I don't believe in psychic vampires. I don't believe in any form of bloody, excuse the swear word, but it's appropriate, vampire. I think to be fair to the questioner, I suppose, he's more familiar with, I suppose, vampirology than certainly I am. And I suppose, I suppose, sort of somebody says a vampirologist doesn't necessarily believe in vampires. And from what knowledge I have of it, which is quite limited, I know there's not always a straight, forward definition of what a vampire is. So I suppose yeah. to be fair to him, I suppose he might well believe in psychic vampires, of or you know the possibility. Not obviously of the first suppose that I suppose, I suppose a lot. Of, I know you were particularly irritated by is when people would literally talk about blood sucking vampire of the sort. Yeah. Of, I suppose the Hammer Horror tradition, or the, uh, even for that to be fair, the Bram Stoker tradition, tradition yeah. as rather than a, a predatory rape, so to speak. Yes. I have said, look, if he believes in psychic vampires, you know, who, who am I to sort of argue about that? I've never said that. Mm. I've said psychic entities, yeah. Yeah. I've said vampires, or entities rather, which take on vampire-like characteristics. And like you say, certain people have said they felt drained of energy. Yes, but also I was mm. referring, I've also used that term in referring to some of the vampire voids. Yeah. Very much human beings, albeit dressed up with mm. fangs and all the rest of it. I've used that term in relation to that. People can drain you psychically. Mm. A living person, you're saying, not yes, necessarily absolutely a, 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 a spirit. Mm. A living human being, and also maybe, perhaps, a spirit. Mm. I mean, some people say that a lot of, I know what I hear, particularly in terminology, particularly amongst people in the paranormal, that ghosts or spirits need energy to manifest. Yeah. And usually some can say that it can be a camera drained of its, you know, the batteries of a yeah, camera yeah. can be drained. Yeah. Some people say it can actually be a, a biomechanical one in the sense that it's it's the person's own life energy that f they feel drained. It's not necessarily yeah. a electrical equipment or electrical energy that was is is you is, dra is drawn. I say not necessarily in a in a what you call it in a kind of malignant way. It's just no. the way the entity needs to manifest itself to appear. Yeah. And some people say that's why the temperature also lowers as well. Yes. I suppose yes. because it's I suppose it's almost like I suppose the process of. Um, when you use a refrigerator, it's it's confection of heat, isn't it, to produce cold, and it's the same sort of principle. Exchange of energy from one to the other. And I hope that's made it more clear, your position. Well, all I was saying is that I've never used the term meaning that, mm. psychic vampires. I think it's quite a modern usage, though, isn't it's it? It's a modern usage, yeah. but look, I don't accept the...